Welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here. Today I've just got a little bit more prep work to do on the shed to get it ready for concrete. In one of the last episodes you saw me take down that front wall and today I've got to take down this back wall which happens to be a full door. Um, as I explained in the other video, this door works great because it gives me lots of clearance but the problem is it's practically rubbing against the ground and if I get just a little bit of snow I can't open the door to get the tractor out. So my plan is get the concrete poured in the shed first and then I want to put a small overhead door. It's going to limit my height. I'm going to have to fold down my ROPS to get the tractor in, but I think overall it's going to be a better setup. So I'm going to take this door off. I think the best way to do that is just to strip the metal one piece at a time rather than try and take the entire door down because that's still probably a heavy, heavy door. I mean, it's what, probably 10 feet tall and 10 feet wide. It's a pretty big door. So I've got to do that. And then I've got to clean up alongside the garage here, get rid of these implements because the cement truck is going to pull in right alongside the garage here. I'm going to have to move that camper again when the cement truck comes, but as you saw in my last video, I've got that nice little clamp on trailer hitch. So that should work out pretty well too. So let's get to work. Welcome to my cluttered garage. You know I'm really glad you're here. Yeah. Remember in my last video how I was bragging on this DeWalt 20 volt impact driver and these batteries and I figured out that I bought this set now and it's at least eight years ago. Been running these same three amp batteries for eight years leaving them in the truck in the winter time and the summertime and they have held up amazingly well. I still love this tool but Ironically, I talked about how I'm expecting these batteries to give up any day now. Turns out that one battery that I tried to use in the last video wasn't just dead, it won't even take a charge. So I've lost that battery. No complaints, eight years there, so I'm gonna replace it soon, probably get a four amp next because the three ampers have held up really well, but you know, why not go a little bit more? I'm telling you, this impact driver, I installed the entire garage roof with this thing. Um, and it just doesn't let up. I'm gonna use it here today because I've got a couple different fasteners on this door and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, 20 year old me didn't have a cordless impact driver or a cordless drill. So I used nails to build this shed to mount the steel. I also, in my 20 year old wisdom, thought it was smarter to put the nails on the high part of the rib rather than on the low part, thinking if water runs down, uh, it's not gonna run in the high parts, it's gonna run in the low parts. So I thought it was smart to put it on the rib. I've later learned that you're not supposed to put your nails or screws on the high part of the rib. And that's because the steel flexes and it can flatten out some and create some leaks around those nail heads. If you nail it securely at the lower part of the rib, you're really driving it in there and it will hold up. So 50 year old me went back and added screws to the low part of the rib. So I need to pull out these nails and pull out these screws. I'll take out the screws first because it's easier and more fun. Today's episode is brought to you by screws. That's right, screws. Easier to put in and easier to take out. Now for the fun part, using the old hammer and pry bar trick. Now because I nailed on the rib, I have to be careful taking these out because I do wanna keep this steel to possibly reuse it. So I'm gonna to have to get behind the nail, but be careful not to bend the rib. The way I'll do that is to use the head of the, of the uh, this thing, the hammer, use the head of this behind the pry bar. That way I can pry against the hammer head rather than the rib. Got it. Oh, that nail was even bent. Look at that thing. Want to see it up close? Knocked over the screws. Look at that thing. Look at that. 
wait, let me focus on it. Look at that. That's one problem also with nails is they go in, they bend. You can see on a couple spots that the tin actually sheared where I hammered the nail in and the nail bent and then it sheared the, the tin. Like right here, for instance, see where the nail went in. Obviously it bent, must have hit a knot or something. And when it did, it shifted the nail, bent the nail and sheared the tin. So if this was a roof, there's a leak you'd have to fill in or cover up. Now, I just have to do that 53 more times, give or take. Now, just behind me, located to the right, are these two barn door hinges that I installed. I used 10 3 8 lags, five on each hinge. So we'll put that little DeWalt 20 volt impact gun to the test and take those lags out. I'm just gonna take the whole door frame off now and that uh, will probably just kind of fall apart, which I am fine with after 30 years. I'm gonna start here on the bottom hinge and work my way up. I'm gonna leave one lag in place and take the other four out. That was easy. And we'll loosen this one just a tad. Now I will rinse and repeat at the top. I'll take out that bottom one, come back up here, take out the top one. Don't go anywhere, stay right there, this will be quick. Okay, bottom one's out, hold things in place. Drop down, excellent. What's holding on? Whoa. Remember that famous old movie clip? Was it Buster Keaton or was it Charlie Chaplin where he's remodeling a house and he stands in front of the house and the, the whole wall crashes down around him. Can I do that? It could be dangerous. Could regret this. just like Buster Keaton. Well, that's one more piece to the puzzle of getting concrete installed in the shed. Like I said, it should happen this upcoming week, hoping that uh, that works out. So now I just have to clean up along the garage here, get ready for that truck, uh, see when Jamie's gonna come and pour, well, not pour forms. I guess he builds the forms before he pours. So, that's going to do it for this episode. I want to thank you for being here today. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I invite you to do so. I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Meanwhile, I look forward to seeing you next time.